Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Storms could get an early start on us Wednesday morning, and some of those could be strong. We'll look at who's under the gun and the latest on Hurricane Laura. All right, Ben, also East Point sending out the alert tonight to be on the lookout for this man caught peeping into the bedrooms of a number of children. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 11, our later edition. Home security cameras just caught him in the act yesterday morning. Police have seen him before and chased him, but he managed to get away. Amara McDonald live tonight at East Point Police Department. Mara, this guy is bold. He sure is, Karen, and this is alarming on a number of levels. But think about this. He shows absolutely no fear. Let me show you. He creeps around in the middle of the night carrying a stepladder. Here he's trying to get a look into the bedroom of an 11 year old girl. Her mom doesn't want to be identified, but talk to us about what her family went through. This is something that you never think will happen to you personally or someone you know. You see it on TV, but you don't think it'll actually happen to you. She didn't hear or see this guy. The dog didn't bark. He's quiet. This guy did not make a sound. He didn't cough. He didn't sneeze. He didn't breathe hard, anything. But the home surveillance system they have sent alerts to her phone. You can see how many times he came back in a two hour span yesterday, and he keeps trying to get a look into her 11 year old daughter's bedroom. According to police, they've been called on a peeping Tom matching his description several times, always in the same clothes with a stepladder. He never tries to break in. The common thread? He's looking into the bedrooms of children. Police have seen him. They've chased him, but he's gotten away. He's very fast. He knows where to hide. Um, so I, I believe he's lived around here for a while, and I think he's watching around, preying on children, the ones uh, apparently that he likes, and going to their homes at night. Back here live, police believe this man is between 30 and 40. They think he's around six feet tall, weighing about 200 pounds. They would really like to identify him. If you have any idea who this man is, East Point PD, they'd really like to hear from you. We're live in East Point tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Oh, I hope they catch him. All right. Thank you, Mara. We also have breaking news in East Point. Police have issued an alert for a missing teenager with autism who may be in danger tonight. 13 year old Marquise Tolbert was last seen leaving a family member's home on Pleasant Street between Topher Drive and Nine Mile Road and then getting into a stranger's black pickup truck. Here is the truck police are now trying to find anyone with information. Please call East Point Police. Four people are dead tonight after a violent crash involving two SUVs. Happened this afternoon in Cutterville Township, which is west of Marine City in St. Clair County. Jason Colthorpe at the scene tonight with more. Jason. Investigators on this scene for more than six hours, and I can explain to you why. Just over here is the intersection where this accident happened, and both vehicles were thrown so far. You can see what's left of one of the vehicles. Well, the other one was even further into the woods, and they've been working to try and pull those vehicles out. The neighbors who responded to this scene told me it's not something they'll ever forget. The state police accident reconstruction team piecing together a devastating two car collision into the night Tuesday. All of a sudden I heard a, a big boom and then trees breaking. Billy Miller was just down the road when he heard it. Walked down there and we were, eyes got wide. It was roaring black smoke. It was probably 12 foot flames. And there, you could feel the heat off them. Another witness thinks it was a Chevy Tahoe that was on fire. It collided with another SUV that was so far into the woods, Miller didn't even notice it at first. One of our buddies, he, he got there first, and he said that there was another vehicle in the woods farther back, and we were shocked. Police brought in an excavator just to get to the vehicles, which were each carrying two people. We're told three of the four victims were ejected from the vehicles. Three died at the scene and the fourth at the hospital. Also, the latest what we're learning on the victims here, two men in one SUV and in the other, a married couple and a local official here on the scene tells us they had four young children at home. We're in Cottrellville Township. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. All right, let's now check in with Ben on a very warm and a pretty muggy night out there, and you're also tracking our next storm threat, I understand. 
Yeah, and those could get an early start on us tomorrow, Karen and Devin. Uh, first, I want to get a check of Hurricane Laura. The 11 o'clock advisory is just in. Uh, right now, this is a strengthening storm, 90 mile per hour sustained winds. It's about 400 miles away from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, tomorrow night at this time, we'll likely be seeing hurricane force winds on the Gulf Coast, somewhere there in the Texas, Louisiana coastline uh, as we head uh, towards tomorrow night. Otherwise, we've got showers already starting to form in Lake Michigan, and those will be starting to move here by tomorrow morning. Some of those could be here pre-dawn, but it's going to be the 8, 9 o'clock hour when we'll see thunderstorms mainly in the north zone, but you'll see some of those extending a little further south, and then those will advance east. By noon, most of that stuff should be out of here, uh, leaving us with a mostly dry afternoon. However, uh, those storms could be strong. Slight risk for severe weather in the north zone. The rest of us under a marginal risk tomorrow. And again, that's for morning thunderstorms. Temperatures getting into the mid-80s in the afternoon, but more heat and more storms on Thursday. That, and we'll talk about the track of Laura coming up in just a few minutes. Guys? And a young woman rushed to the hospital tonight after a rollover crash. This happened right in the middle of West Side neighborhood. Tim Pamplin is on the scene with the night cam. Just pulling up at Coil and Linda, Detroit's west side. That's Grand River, Greenfield area. Uh, the young lady rolled her vehicle. She's on the ground there. They were going to use the jaws of life, but use brute force, these firefighters. Got the door open, got her out. The stretcher is now just pulling up. I'm being told it's a combination of inexperienced driving and speed. She was zooming down Coil Street here, clipped this parked car on the left here, you see. That was enough to send her car barrel rolling down Coil. Again, she's out the vehicle. She was the only occupant and they're putting her up on the stretcher, waiting for a condition on her. That is the scene on the west side tonight with the night cam, Tim Pamplin, local four. All right, also on Detroit's west side, three people, including a two-year-old, rushed to the hospital after a collision between a Dodge Charger and a semi. This happened just before five this afternoon along Davison Avenue. 22-year-old mother and her daughter were heading east on Davison when they collided with the semi that was heading west. That child is in critical condition tonight. Police are investigating what led to the accident. Tonight, the Genesee County Health Department is linking a new outbreak of coronavirus cases to an indoor wedding reception. There are six cases now linked to an August 15th reception at Flushing Valley Golf and Country Club that more than 100 people attended. The health department is warning tonight anyone who was there may be at risk for infection and for spreading the virus. Today, the state's reporting 779 new cases over the last 24 hours, and that include, and there are also 20 additional deaths to report. During her briefing today, Governor Whitmer got a flu shot and encouraged all of us to get one too. So when we all get our flu vaccine, we can help keep thousands of flu patients out of the hospitals and prevent overcrowding. Now imagine if we had a major flu outbreak on top of the surge that we experienced in March and April of this year. Governor also addressed gymnasium or gyms and movie theater closures, saying she won't be bullied into opening them and will only make that decision when it's safe to do so. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., the Southfield Fire and Police Departments will be updating their investigation into how a young woman was declared dead while she was still alive. Today, family attorney Jeffrey Feiger said a 20-year-old Tamisha Beauchamp was in a body bag for two hours before employees at a Detroit funeral home discovered she was still breathing. According to the fire department, paramedics tried to revive her for 30 minutes before declaring her dead. Tonight, she remains in critical condition at Sinai Grace Hospital, where she is on a respirator. An autopsy revealing Priscilla Slater actually died from a heart issue while in custody of the Harper Woods Police Department. Slater was found unresponsive inside of a holding cell back on June 10th. The Wayne County Medical Examiner says Slater died of cardiac dysrhythmia. The manner of her death was natural, involving no foul play. Last week, two Harper Woods officers were fired after the city found the officers doctored Slater's police report but said there was no evidence of wrongdoing in her death. President Trump's family taking center st stage on night two. Now the Republican National Convention, Eric and Tiffany Trump, as well as First Lady Melania Trump, all delivering speeches this evening. Alice Barr has more of tonight's highlights. America. Night two of the Republican National Convention, showcasing the Trump presidency and shattering norms. In a display of presidential power, he pardoned a Nevada man who leads a prisoner reentry program. You have done incredible work. Thank you, sir. He also presided over an immigration naturalization ceremony. 
in a break with tradition that prohibits mixing campaign politics and U.S. policy, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo endorsing President Trump while on an official trip to Jerusalem, where the president delivered on a controversial campaign promise to relocate the U.S. Embassy. The president, too, moved the U.S. Embassy to this very city of God, Jerusalem, the rightful capital of the Jewish homeland. Turning a more personal spotlight on President Trump, two of the president's children fiercely defending him. Make America great again is not a slogan for my father. It is what drives him to keep his promise of doing what is right for American citizens. And to every proud American who bleeds red, white and blue, my father will continue to fight for you. And First Lady Melania Trump headlining the night with an address from the White House Rose Garden before a live audience. I want to acknowledge the fact that since March, our lives have changed drastically. The invisible enemy, COVID-19, swept across our beautiful country and impacted all of us. Again, breaking precedent by using the White House as a campaign backdrop. Republicans hoping the first lady will appeal to female voters in key battleground states. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. All right, Alice, join us back here tomorrow night, the third night of the convention. Uh, we'll bring our coverage to you on Local 4 and click on Detroit.com at 10 p.m. Tomorrow evening it includes an address from Vice President Mike Pence. Still ahead. Hurricane Laura moving closer to the Gulf Coast. Mass evacuations underway and when the storm could make landfall. My life flashed before my eyes and I was like, oh my God, please don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Two 12-year-old girls come within inches of being run over. The confrontation at a convenience store that nearly turned deadly. But first, new video shows the moments before the police shooting of Jacob Blake. And that is next.